Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. I'm gonna try something different in this little series. Um, if, if you haven't checked out uh, Mr. Pete 222 or search for Tubal Cane on YouTube, uh, this guy has hundreds, I think well over a thousand videos now. Um, and, and his channel's just absolutely chock full of, of great tips and shop wisdom. And I've learned an enormous amount uh, from watching his videos. And uh, he does everything, in, including some projects. And when he does projects, he, he mostly works from prototypes and then revises them. He doesn't usually use drawings. And uh, uh, if you work from CNC like I do, you usually want some sort of a model to work from. Uh, but his projects are, are simple enough and, and straightforward enough that they actually make really good modeling uh, examples as well. So uh, I happen to have the same kind of lathe that he has. It's an uh, Atlas Craftsman lathe, and I didn't have the, uh, the carriage stop for it. And he did that project about a year ago, and I uh, thought it would make a really good modeling example. So uh, in the next two videos, and I'm gonna keep these really short, I'm gonna do a, a run through of modeling uh, this project from start to finish. Th this isn't meant to be an educational tutorial on how to use part design. It's, a, uh, uh, it, it's more an example of, of how you would use it. Um, you can slow down and go through things, but if you, you need more in-depth uh, explanation of specific uh, modeling techniques or uh, part design tools, then uh, please leave a comment below uh, and, and I can look at doing some tutorials around that. Uh, you could also check out the, uh, the book, Free CAD for Inventors. And uh, you might find something in there useful. And uh, anyway, let's get on with it. Here you go. Before we get started, we're going to set up the project and add uh, uh, body objects for each of the five parts that are in here. I'm going to create uh, uh, five of these and then I'm going to rename them so that we can kind of keep them straight. Now, it isn't strictly necessary to do this when you're modeling. In fact, if I was working on my own, I wouldn't. I would create the bodies as I need them. But for the purposes of recording a video, it, it's better if I have all the bodies created ahead of time. It gives me a little flexibility in editing so that I can uh, do things in a different order so that it's a little bit clearer when the final video comes out. The first piece we're going to model is the base piece, and we're going to do that by drawing a sketch on the uh, YZ plane. That makes sense to think about what feature you want to uh, kind of base everything around, and in this case the important feature is that central bore. And it has a, a, a diameter of 29 60 fourths, uh, and that'll be uh, tapped uh, in the final, final build. Uh, I'm going to set the center of it on the origin and then set the diameter constraint. And then I'm going to go back and use the polyline tool and just roughly draw the uh, perimeter. Um, we're looking at the part from the side here. And then I can set uh, a number of uh, linear constraints for the, the size. So the overall length of this thing is 2 inches. And the height is, um, is 1 inch. So we'll set a, a height constraint on that, that side. Now I'll, I'll add constraints for the cutout, which is 3 eighths of an inch high and a half inch uh, deep or, or long, I guess. Now the only thing that's still open is the XY position. And I want the, the piece to be relative to that central bore. So it's going to be uh, 9 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, the bore is 9 sixteenths of an inch from the bottom of the piece. So we'll set the constraint on that. And then the distance is uh, actually 1 and 9 sixteenths inch from, from the edge. And uh, it's always confusing to me how to enter like a mixed fraction here and I, I think you need to I'm gonna try this as 1 plus 9 sixteenths and now uh, yeah, FreeCAD corrected that to 1 inch. Um, I think you have to use I think it's some combination of parentheses here. Uh, I'll go back and just enter it manually as 25 sixteenths 
Um, that's now correct. So now the sketch is fully constrained and I can close it and then uh, pad it out. And I'm going to pad this symmetric to the plane because I want to use that plane later on and I'm padding it to an inch and a half. Okay, the next thing that I need to do is draw another sketch on the top and uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to sketch the, the cutout uh, as well as the two holes. So to do this I need to get an ex a reference to external geometry to this edge and then I'm going to use a rectangle tool and draw the rectangle but I'll, I'll select that first edge so the, the parts or the uh, vertexes are on the line. And then by selecting two of them, I can set them symmetric to this uh, um, y-axis. And now I can set the distance between one of those and the end to three-eighths of an inch. And my cutout will remain symmetric in the middle of my part. Now the next dimension is the, uh, uh, the depth of the, the cut, or the length of the cut, I guess. And that's going to be relative to the back edge. So in this case, it, it ends up being one inch from point to point. Okay, uh, I forgot I need to put the holes in here too. So I'll, I'll draw two circles on this uh, on the same face. These are for the two bolt holes. And then I'll set those the center points of those as symmetric around this axis. And I'll set the two circles equal to each other. And I just need to set a uh, diameter constraint on one of these. And these are 21 64ths. Okay, now the only thing that's still unconstrained here is the distance between the two. And we'll set that with a uh, uh, length constraint. And it is 7 eighths of an inch. And then the uh, position, um, I, I can still, I have one degree of freedom left, which is the movement on that, I guess it's the Y axis. And uh, um, we're going to set this at three quarters of an inch. Uh, that doesn't look right. Oh, it's three quarters of an inch from the, the other end. So I'll delete that constraint and reapply it, selecting the center and the other end point. Okay, that looks correct. Now I can close that and pocket it, and I'll pocket through all and say OK. And now that I, my part looks, uh, looks correct. The only feature that's remaining is the, uh, the hole for the set screw. And that's on one of the two legs on here. I need to make sure that I'm sketching on the right, the right leg, which is, I guess, is the left leg as I'm looking at it. And I'm going to draw the circle and make sure that it, the point is on the line for that uh, x-axis. Set the diameter constraint. And this one can either be a 1 8 inch um, roll pin or it can be tapped to uh, 1024. Uh, I don't know what the diameter is on that. So I'm going to set this as 1 8 of an inch. Because everything's parametric, it's very easy to go back and resolve after the fact. I need an external or reference to external geometry so I can set the distance here. And uh, for something like this, what you can do is select the line and the point and then use a linear uh, distance constraint, which is this double edged arrow. And that will uh, set the distance from the center of the circle to the line at uh, 3 16 of an inch. You see that puts it right in the center of that leg. Now I can pocket through. And in this case, I'm going to pocket to first. And that lets the hole go all the way through the wall without going any farther and gouging onto the backside. Okay, I think that our uh, base object is done, so we'll turn our attention to the clamp. So I'll toggle the active body for the clamp, and I'm going to set a um, this is a shape binder object because I want to use those holes. And I want to use some of the other attributes of this face in controlling my clamp object. So I'm going to draw another sketch. This one's also going to be on the YZ plane. And I need a, a couple references to lines in the uh, uh, shape binder. And one is this long edge. 
because I'm going to use that to uh, control the length and the uh, orientation of my uh, um, my basic shape. So I'll just get that line, and then I'm going to again use the polyline tool and draw a rough uh, perimeter for the part. And the part that he's modeled. Uh, um, can be used in one of two configurations depending on the thickness of the the lathe um, the lathe ways. Uh, if it's three eighths of an inch, you use it in this orientation, and if you have the half inch uh, ways, you flip it over and use it the other way. So uh, in this case, I need the uh, um, I'm going to set that point on line, and that will keep the uh, um, my part directly aligned above the other one. And then I'll set the thickness on this to a uh, quarter of an inch. And I also set that equality constraint between my bottom line and that long line in the shape binder. So my, my piece is uh, the same length as the part, two inches. And uh, we've got um, three eighths of an inch on this end. And now I just need to set the, the length of this, uh, of the, the cutout and that's an inch and five-eighths. Or thirteen-eighths of an inch, I guess. It's the same thing. So the only unconstrained, the only degree of freedom remaining is the vertical position here. And it, it's not in critical dimension. I just want to make sure that my part uh, appears below my, uh, my base piece. So I'm going to slide this down uh, so it's below and then I'll set a, a vertical length constraint and uh, um, I just need to select one point it'll automatically use the origin if there isn't another point so I'll set that length constraint it wants it to be at least negative 70 I'll set it at negative three quarters of an inch and you see I'm fully constrained and again I'm ready to uh, pad this out and it, this is a half uh, inch and a half just like the uh, the top piece or the, the base piece but I need to make sure that I pad this symmetric to the plane so it stays under underneath it. Now the only remaining feature is the two holes that have to align with the top piece so I'm sketching on that bottom face again and then I'm gonna uh, get a couple references to the shape binder edges for those holes. It's probably easier to now turn the shape binder off Now we'll go ahead and uh, draw the the circles for the bolt holes and select them and set them equal to the shape binder uh, lines. And that sets, I guess, to, yeah, I gotta do it one at a time, it seems. Okay, now the sketch is fully constrained so I can close it and pocket through all. And that should finish off the clamp part. The dial. Um, there's probably a half a dozen different ways to, to do the dial. And I'm going to do something that's a little bit unusual in here you wouldn't expect. I mean, I could do this with just a, an additive cylinder. Um, I could do it by sketching a cylinder on the YZ plane. But instead, I'm going to use a revolve, and uh, and I'll explain why. The as I draw this thing, I'm going to use the polyline tool again, and I'm going to draw the the top edge, but I'm going to draw it as two segments that are are, are actually uh, collinear, and uh, and then the the. Uh, um, the the bottom edge of this, which is going to be the inside of the bore, is one line, and. Uh, you know, if I just drew this as, as a rectangle and then revolved it around the axis, what would happen is I would end up with uh, um, I'd, I'd end up with a cylinder with with my bore on there. But what I want is that that extra line on the outside surface that indicates the difference between the knurling and the uh, 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 the indicator, the, the graduation marks. So I, I'm going to draw it with two lines. I'm going to set the uh, uh, overall length to be three quarters of an inch and uh, symmetric to that axis, so that that that's a close fit inside the cutout. And I'll set uh, a half an inch on this top piece. That that's going to be the the half inch I reserve for. That'll be where the indicator marks are. 
and uh, then I just need to set two height constraints, one for the, the, uh, the radius of the bore, and uh, that's 7 30 seconds of an inch, and then one for the radius of the outside, and uh, this is going to be a half inch uh, because it's a it's one inch um, all the way around. So now we're fully constrained, and you'll see when I do the revolve on this around that axis, I get that line on there. And if I was doing tech draw or something and doing a technical drawing, then I'd be able to um, attach a dimension to that line and uh, indicate where it's at.